Hey guys, and welcome to another replay. This time, we're going to be playing back through Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary Edition on the PC. Now, about seven years ago, I did cover this game, um, and it was only when recently I was thinking about going and playing Halo 2, when a friend of mine actually asked um, for my playlist for Halo. Now, he hasn't seen this game before, so when I went to link my playlist, I had a quick look at it, and you know what? It's old, it was crusty, it needs updating, so that's exactly what we're going to be doing. So, Halo 1, eh? My god, this was the first game that I actually had for my original Xbox back in the day, when everybody was hyped and excited about getting their grubby little mitts on the PlayStation 2. Oh no, I had my eye on something else, and that of course was this fancy new magic box of tricks called an Xbox with a strange sci-fi shooter called Halo. Hmm. <sighs> Glorious days. So, what we're going to be doing this time... We're going to be playing through Halo. Uh, we're going to be doing the Anniversary Edition, obviously, and that gives us access to Skulls. It gives us access to um, Terminals as well, which weren't in the original release. So, what are Skulls and Terminals? Well, Skulls are basically collectibles that were part of Halo from the second game on. Uh, they weren't in the original game. So they've been retroactively added. And terminals, well, terminals were added, uh, I believe, from Halo 2 on, or possibly Halo 3 on. Um, I'm not 100% sure. Um, but they basically add deep background lore. Because the Halo universe now is massive. When this game originally came out, Bungie weren't actually sure whether it was going to be a success or a flop, you know. They had very, very low expectations for this game. Uh, it was in development hell for a very long time. It was originally supposed to be a strategy game for the Mac. Yes, I'm not kidding. And eventually it became a first-person shooter exclusive for Microsoft's fancy new box of tricks. So, when this game first came out, there wasn't a lot of lore or story established, and it tells, it shows this game from a, from a narrative aspect has aged rather poorly. You can see, by the time that we came around to Halo 2, Bungie were like, oh shit, we've got a winner here. Let's actually start fleshing out the universe and the lore and all that good stuff. And, um... Obviously, the series, the game series, starts on uh, Halo Reach, which is a pretty phenomenal game. So it's kind of weird if you play these in order. You play through Reach, and it's a pretty good, modern, fun shooter with lots of story. And then <laughs> the following game, which is the original Halo Anniversary, well, it feels very basic and, and very cut down. Um, this game actually starts exactly where Halo Reach finishes. So at the end of Reach, we successfully defended the dock, which launched the Halcyon-class cruiser, the Pillar of Autumn, which is a very small, very outdated ship, which has been massively upgraded uh, with the latest, at the time, human technology. Uh, it was launched just as Reach was falling. So why was that particular ship so important? Well, a lot of people assume it's because Master Chief was on board, but that was sort of a happy coincidence. No, uh, as valuable as Spartans are in the Halo universe, it was carrying something much, much, much more important. It was carrying Cortana. She had just been brought online, and she, although humanity had had a lot of AIs, uh, dumb AIs and smart AIs. Cortana was in a different league. She was 
way more advanced than any of that. So she's the actual um, football, so to speak, that uh, <laughs> um, the Pillar of Autumn was actually carrying to, uh, you know, off reach. Because if the Covenant got caught on her, they would learn everything. They would learn where all the planets of humanity are, all this stuff. Basically, it would be a game over situation. So the Pillar of Autumn uh, launched from the dry dock and did a blind jump away from Reach, which had fallen, totally destroyed. Uh, and they find something out amongst the stars, something rather unexpected, which is going to set off a weird chain of events, which is going to change the course of the modern Halo universe forever. And that is where this game starts. Uh, now, interesting, with the books, there's about a two or three week difference between these two games. There is some stuff that happens, but for the context of the games, it's not that important. However, they do cover something interesting in Halo uh, 1 Anniversary, which kind of um, changes the, the narrative of the game. It's a small little Easter egg. Uh, when Halo first came out, everybody just assumed that Master Chief was the only Spartan surviving. He's not. There's a few. There's not as many as there were, but there's still a few. And he's not the only Spartan on the Pillar of Autumn. <gasps> But anyway, we'll cover that as we get into it. So, we're going to be playing this game from the beginning. We're going to be playing on Heroic, because Heroic is the recommended difficulty for this game. It is the ga the difficulty that the game is balanced on. Legendary is good fun, but yeah, I don't really want to be editing videos too heavily. Uh, normal and easy are just kind of like a cakewalk, really. They're just fun if you want to blaze through for the story. But if you want to have a good time, Heroic is where it's at. Anyway, let's go. First, the Covenant ships have always been faster. As for tracking us all the way from Reach, at light speed my maneuvering options were limited. We were running dark, yes? Until we decelerated, no one could have missed the hole we tore in subspace. They were waiting for us on the far side of the planet. So, where do we stand? Our fighters are mopping up the last of their recon picket now, nothing serious. But I've isolated approach signatures for multiple CCS-class battle groups. Make it three capital ships per group. And in about 90 seconds, they'll be all over us. Well, that's it then. Bring the ship back up to combat alert alpha. I want everyone at their station. Everyone, sir? Everyone. And Cortana. Hmm? Let's give our old friends a warm welcome. I've already begun. Platoon, 
not a drill. I repeat, this is not a drill. Man, here's where we show those split chin squid head sons of bitches that they could not have picked a worse enemy than the human race. We are going to blow the hell out of those dumb bugs until we don't have anything left to shoot them with. And then we are going to strangle them with their own living guts. Am I right, Marine? Sir, yes, sir. Damn mm -hmm. right I am. Now move it out. Double time. Attention all personnel. We are re-engaging the enemy. External and internal contact imminent. All you greenhorns who wanted to see Covenant up close, this is going to be your lucky day. Sir? Right. Let's thaw him out. Okay. Bringing low-level systems online. Cracking the case in 30 seconds. He's hot. Blowing the pins in five. Yeah, yes we do, because things are about to get pretty bad for the Pillar of Autumn. So, uh, she has had her extensive refit and upgrades, been launched from the dry dock, and, well, this is her maiden shakedown and final voyage. Anyway, that's fine, we've picked up a skull. Skulls are collectibles that are hidden in the new anniversary edition. Uh, hopefully we're going to get them all. Um, yeah, things are bad, but luckily, good old Master Chief... Uh, is on board, and his sole mission is to protect Court Honor at all costs. Gee, I hope you don't die. Oh, unlucky, sir. Right, let's start moving through the ship and see if we can't find ourselves some kind of firearm. That doesn't look good. And man the music. Oh, man the music. Evening. What's going on in here? Oh, Covenant. We have some elites. They're blue elites, which means they're the lowest rank elite. But they're still dangerous. Very dangerous. They are the um, frontline soldiers for the Covenant. And they uh, also fulfill leadership on the battlefield role. Uh, nasty pieces of work. Humans aren't much of a threat on one on one combat. And they're roughly as powerful and strength-wise as a Spartan. Right, let's get out of here. They are grunts. They are basically the cannon fodder that the Covenant uses. They're their absolute basic foot soldier. They are thrown en masse to break enemy lines. All right. All right, come on up. I love the way he does that little dip. He always does that on every version of the game. Little dip before he turns around. Well, already, this is not going well, is it? This armory has been completely picked clean. Woof. Alright, get those blast doors closed. Otherwise, things are going to get pretty bad for us pretty quick. Whew. Made it to the bridge. But... Alright, let me just check out the ads before I uh, go in. Fist of the Unicorn, eh? Ah, so the Pillar of Autumn had its own band, eh? Have you seen my goose? He is missing. Reward offered. Okay. Work for hire. Any job. Two weeks. is easy. Uh-huh. Cat found. Male. No collar. Not very friendly. I think you might be scared. Not housebroken either. Love that meme. Yep. So there's lots of flavor around the ship. But, uh, you know, we've got covies to kill. Now, also, flashing incoming message, which nobody has noticed because, well, things are a little bit busy at the moment. Let's go take a little look, shall we? Continued presence will result in most unpleasant countermeasures. I'm 
must insist that you immediately change course and return to a minimum safe distance of one light year. This has served as your one and final warning. I have activated defensive systems and you now have 30 seconds to return to the minimum safe distance of... Wait. Curious. Curious indeed, after all these years. Greetings, humans, and welcome to Installation 04. Ignore prior warnings, and please continue. I have disabled defensive systems to allow your approach, but you must not exit your ship once you have arrived at the designated landing center. This reef contains significant dangers, and even with your assumed legacy, I must verify the presence and pitch of your gay eye before allowing full access. We have much to discuss, humans. I have been away far too long. You have been away far too long. Well, that was weird and mysterious. Some strange transmission welcoming, welcoming us back to this um, installation 04, recognizing us as humans, allowing us in peacefully. Hmm, that is probably nothing. Anyway, let's go see the captain. Captain Keys. Good to see you, Master Chief. Things aren't going well. Cortana did her best, but we never really had the chance. A dozen Covenant superior battleships against a single Halcyon class cruiser. With those odds, I'm content with three. I think the four is a bit too easy. Sleep well? No thanks to you, I didn't get in. So you didn't. Report! It must have been one of their boarding parties. I'd guess an antimatter charge. Ma'am! Fire control for the main cannon is offline! Captain, the cannon was my last offensive option. All right, then. I'm initiating cold protocol article two for abandoning the auto cannon. That means you too, Cortana. While you do what? Go down with the ship? In a matter or two. If the object were found, I'm going to try and land the autumn on it. With all due respect, sir, this war has enough dead heroes. I appreciate your concern, Cortana, but it's not up to me. Protocol is clear. Destruction or capture of a shipboard AI is absolutely unacceptable. That means you're leaving. Lock in a selection of emergency landing zones, upload them to my neural lace, and then sort yourself out how to fix it. Aye, aye, sir. But just swear you do your job. Get Cortana off this ship. Keep her safe from the enemy. If they capture her, they'll learn everything. Force deployment, weapons research. Her. I understand. The Autumn will continue evasive maneuvers until you initiate a landing. That you'll listen, but I'd suggest letting my subroutines handle the final approach. Excellent work, Cortana. Thank you. Are you ready? Yank me. Good luck, man. Your architecture isn't much different from the Autumn's. Don't get any funny ideas. I don't keep it loaded, son. You'll never find ammo in your gun. Well, that's unfortunate. Cheers, Captain. So, that's Captain Keys. You'll see him brandishing a pipe there during that cutscene. Uh, he doesn't actually smoke. That pipe is more of a comfort thing for him, which you will find more about that in the books. Also, his pistol that he carries, that he has given us, uh, he doesn't keep ammo for it either. Because uh, though there is a lore explanation of why he doesn't like to keep his pistol loaded, it's just for show. But it escapes me. However, because we're playing on heroic difficulty, the game does start us with ammo. Right, let's get to work on these grunty bastards. Now, this uh, M6D Magnum is ridiculous. 
It is one of the most powerful weapons in the game. Uh, a lot of people instantly discard it because hu 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 pistol. No! Every weapon in Halo has a purpose. And you'll be carrying this pistol through the game a lot. This is the MA5B assault rifle. It's not bad. It's pretty much a close range weapon in this configuration because it has the 60 round box magazine in this game but its accuracy is absolutely useless in this game for some reason um, they do explain it by calling it the MA6, uh, MA5B which is kind of like a more short range version it gets a lot better as the games go on alright let's do all these elites. It's pretty good if you uh, advance on elites and it's good for clearing things out close range. But any more than that, anything five meters away, uh, you're going to want to use short bursts. Its accuracy is actually pretty good in short bursts. But then it is supposed to be a 7.62 machine gun with 60. 60 rounds in the magazine. That is a heavy, unwieldy weapon, but whatever. It is sci-fi video game magic. Right, we've loaded up. We've got plenty of ammo. Now, this game also has medkits, which is the only Halo that has medkits outside of uh, Halo ODST. Um, your health is actually under your shield bar in the top right corner there. Uh, you can only pick up health kits if you need them. So they are used as you grab them. Anyway, let's get off this ship because uh, things are going south pretty quick. Oop, that is not the button I wanted to push. <laughs> that's what I wanted to push. Boop. Now, that's supposed to be a demonstration there of uh, if you walk up behind an enemy, one punch to the back will kill anybody. Also, one thing I like about the pistol is it has a zoom function. Now, one thing that was really cool with Halo is that weapon on the floor there, you can see the ammo counter is on 30. That means if you pick that gun up and use holding another weapon, you would have 30 rounds in the gun. It was really that detailed. All right, let's keep going. That's not good. This bit was in the promotional material for the game uh, on the videotape, which I watched over and over and over again. Woof. It's like they've got some boarding craft coming in. It's Nukem. Nukem Rico. Probably should have popped him in the back. That's fine. Welcome to the Pillar of Autumn, you sacks of shit. Yeah. I don't know where the elite went. Must have vaporized him. Okay, well, if we go back into the boarding craft, we can actually grab an overshield, which will give us another two shields. Now, I'm pretty sure in the original game, uh, your overshield would tick down over time. You cannot pick up another overshield until your one is completely deleted. Uh, depleted. There you are. Let's chase him down. Whoa, he's hocking grenades at us. That's no good. So we're going to stick him with a grenade. Now, we shouldn't actually have grenades yet. Um, there is a point of this level where it gives you loads of grenades. And that's kind of the grenade tutorial. But because we're playing it on Heroic, uh, we can instantly have access to them. Evening, Squire. Stick that in your split chin pie hole. Damn hinge heads. Yep, grenades are pretty violent. Uh, in fact, the combat loop of this game is built around using them. Grenades are everywhere. And we're going to be enjoying them. Use them like popping candy. Now, when uh, there are grenades on the floor, if you throw a grenade, it will set off a chain reaction and demo up every single grenade. Which can lead to some amusing situations. All right, let's continue finding a way off this ship. Because it certainly looks like Covenant are making 
some pretty impressive progress. Whoop. Whoop. Now, if we use the Covenant sticky grenades, the plasma grenades, we can actually stick them to enemies. Yes, Mark V armor. Enjoy it. It's probably going to be the best thing you ever see in your short life. Oh, dear. Grenades are nasty. If you get stuck by a sticky grenade, it's game over. Oof. Stuck it to his face. Okay. The gunplay and the combat is just as fun as it always was. You had a shot. Go on, hit me. No, hit me. Get rid of the less... Go on, shoot me, you fool. Get rid of the last of my shield. So I can pick up another one. Thank you. There we go. Now we can pick up another one. The one time you want an elite to shoot you, and he starts acting like a bitch. Come on, men. Now oh, this place looks like it has no power. This place looks like it has too much power. Oh, let's see if we can't save this tech. You right there, buddy? Oh, grunties. We like the grunts. They're fun to shoot. Oh, evening. Come here, you little snaky bastard. There we go. 60 rounds into the chest to sort just about anybody out. All right. Let's keep going. You all right there, buddy? You, 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 you might want to might wanna get going. Okay. I'm not carrying you. On the landing above us. I see. Well, let's make some short work of these guys. Yeah, the Magnum really does the Lord's work. Oof. Oh, that was cute. Almost got that in my back pocket. There we go. Tag the fucker. <laughs> oh, that was sweet. Ooh. Sit down at the back. It's never all of them, friend. Let's keep going. Right, let's try and find ourselves a lifeboat. Oh. Evening, guys. So you're the big cheese in this uh, squad, I see. Oh, you're dead now. Now, if you kill the elites in a squad, usually the grunts will panic. Or, yeah, sometimes the grunts will just panic anyway. Because they're grunts. The AI in this game is actually quite fun. Uh, and it's something that evolved quite a lot as the series uh, went on. Now, this handgun will also... Pop an unshielded. Ah, oh, not quite. We'll pop an unshielded um, guy in one shot if you get a headshot on him. So that's always worth remembering. However, these hinge heads kind of have these large, floppy noodle heads. So, not always easy to get a headshot on them when their heads are flapping around. Ah, yeah, looks like some people are getting away. The life pods are launching. We should hurry. Yeah. Oof. Good thing we weren't on that one. Hmm. What's this? Uh, that's assault rifle ammo. We've got plenty of that. Let's drop these guys. Yeah, unfortunately, even though we're a Spartan in our nice Spartan armor, uh, if we get hit in one of those pods, we're, we're done. Right, come on. Open the door. Now, we do have this helmet-mounted flashlight, which does have a bar that ticks down. Uh, not sure why. Um, the Spartan armor does have night vision and loads of other tools, but... I guess that part of the law wasn't really fleshed out <laughs> for the games at the time. Whoop! 
Ooh, caught him on his toe. <laughs> okay. Now we can come through here. Oh, right in his pocket. Oh, that's embarrassing. Now we can go straight through there. Or, if we go this way, if we were playing it on a lower difficulty, we would have a little bit of a tutorial on how to use melee. But, we're not going to get that because we're playing on uh, Heroic. Oh, we've got a warp warp. Warp, 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 warp. Where are you, you dopey hinge head? Oh, ah, oh, no grenades. That's sad. That's fine, we're going to get more. Yes, ooh, hinge head. There we go. What about a neck full of lead? Huh? That sorted you out, didn't it? Hey, we've got some more nades. So you can carry uh, four Covenant grenades. Ooh, what's on the menu? Turkey dinner, hamburger dinner, cheeseburger dinner, hot dog dinner, meatloaf dinner, chef's special. You don't want that. Cola, lemon and lime, lemonade, orange, water, soda. Chef's surprise. Uh, hot chocolate. Cappuccino. Coffee? Oh, yes, please. Hot tea and iced tea. All right. I mean, they got the basics covered, I suppose. Yeah, so we can have eight grenades total. Four human and um, four stickies. Four covenant. Uh, as Halo goes on, we get a lot more varieties of grenades. Evening. Disappointed. Yes, they did want to catch me napping. Unfortunately, no dice. And there's us. Master Chief, UNSC Petty Officer, John 117. Now, if we come over here, <gasps> what's this? UNSC Petty Officer, Linda 058. Unavailable. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, so Linda is actually on board, but she is basically dead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as close to dead without being dead as you could possibly be due to a prior engagement that happened. Uh, so they stuffed her into a cryopod to try and take, get her to medical attention. Now, as uh, all the life pods and whatnot are ejecting, she has also been ejected into space and she is now floating above installation 04. Hopefully, after all this business is over, uh, John will uh, pick her up on the way out of here and uh, take her to safety. Not a spoiler, this game's like, you know, 20 plus years old now. And uh, we know Linda survives because she's in later games and books. Right. Linda is also one of John's friends. Whereas John was the all-round tactician and not necessarily the best at anything as the Spartans go. He was just very clever. A master tactician and as Kiltona would have you believe, he was lucky. Linda was the fastest of the Spartans and she was the best sniper. Okay. Right, let's clear these guys out. Bad day to be you. Not much better being you. Right. Evening. Ooh, right in the coin purse. Little for you. Now, one thing that's really cool about this rifle as well is it has quite a complicated uh, ammo ejection system. We can't see it because we're in first person, but when you watch any, um, your teammates use the gun, for instance, you see the ejector come back and the rounds fly out. It's really, really cool. This game was very advanced for its time. Evening. Damn Ungoy. Bastards. Hey, no running. Hey, you throw your flaming shit at me. Son of a bitch. <laughs> damned if we do, damned if we don't in that situation. Right. 
Yeah, you got to watch out for those uh, grenades. They are sneaky. Now, the checkpoints in this game are an interesting beast that nobody understands. The game is randomly checkpointing all the time. Uh, if a few factors are satisfied, the game will save your progress. Right. But you can also find yourselves in a rather unfortunate situation. Especially on higher difficulties where you're out of ammo, out of grenades and very low on health. Okay. Now the health, this is where you're supposed to first get grenades. Evening guys. Hot potatoes. Hot potatoes for everybody. Let's try and get a nade. Now human grenades are very bouncy as we can see. And they're also very explosive, as we can see. Ah, the hinge head is dead. Right. And that, my friends, is where we're going to leave the first video. Thank you very much for watching. And when we come back, well, we're going to finally get our armoured green boots on the fertile soil of Installation 04 and continue our adventure.